I don't know who that gentleman was. I couldn't find him again. And it's, it was, it's like, why was this person here to help me at that particular moment? There's a lot of people he could have helped, but he chose me. And, and I still wonder who that, who that guy was. And it was just being there. You never know what moment that when you help somebody, it's such a small thing like that, how it will change their life and other people's lives. And Ultimately, what, what happened was, is right behind me, you'll see this quote on this chalkboard. I'm sitting in our, our home right now. And, and I saw this quote in about 2000 and probably 16, where it set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you become the person who can. And it just stuck with me. She's like, you've never done a triathlon. Why would you do something like that? Maybe scale back slightly. And it went back to this quote that's behind me here, setting that goal so big that you can't achieve it. I, I definitely was not the person who could achieve that goal that day, but decided at that moment I was going to try to do something completely different. As the process went along, uh, 2017 was really the prep year. I heard anything from, why are you doing this race? Who are you trying to, to impress? To, I had every excuse in the book. I have an old pair of worn out running shoes. I don't own a bike. I don't know anything about nutrition, all that. But I did spend about six to nine months trying to figure that out. And it, and it was difficult. As I was standing on the, on the beach getting ready to start with 2,500 other racers, I was, I, was, I was truly scared. And I swam out to about 150 meters. And as close to a panic attack that I think I've ever had, I had it at that moment. My heart was racing. I felt like my race day was done. I put in six months of training. My family is there. My boys are there. At that moment, I just I had to make a decision of, do I continue this race or do I go back and I can have all the excuses in the world? It's okay. You know, I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. And I decided at that moment that I was going to change my entire race and ultimately ended up changing my life. As I moved forward, from that 150 meters, I composed myself and I swam to the first kayak and stopped. And which is legal during the races, you can stop and talk to them. And they said, are you okay? And I said, yes, I just need to compose myself. So I did that, adjusted my goggles. And then I swam to the next kayak, which is another hundred meters. So my entire race turned into surviving the swim. And that was 100 meters at a time, which I thought was doable there. The encouragement of the volunteers during that swim and getting through that swim and actually having my feet hit sand as I came out of the water was probably one of the most proud moments I've ever had for myself personally. High fives to my family, everybody's excited and like, oh, you've got this. And I'm thinking, oh, I have this. And then a quarter of the mile into the run, everything stopped, literally hit the wall. And I'd never hit the wall like I had hit, hit it that day. And my body said, you're done. I was hanging my head. I was really struggling. Nothing left in the tank. It was the, it was the turnaround point. And I saw an ambulance and I thought, you know, I think my race could be done right now. I could go to the ambulance. I could sit in there. I could take an IV. It's air conditioned. All these negative thoughts, all these things that were coming in that I had to fight for hours. A gentleman came up to me at mile six and a half, and this was a major turning point in my life too. He came up to me and said, are you okay? And he said, you're not going to finish this race unless you take this salt. And all of my racing for all my life, never trying to think new on race day. And I said, no, you know, I think I'm going to be okay. And he goes, no, you have to take this salt. And he stayed with me for a mile or two, which is extremely rare. That, that moment right there, really changed the trajectory of my entire triathlon for the next four years. So I had to decide at that moment, very similar to uh, the race in Muncie, do I continue or do I stop? I was truly nervous. I seriously thought about stopping, but then I thought to myself, you know, my father-in-law had on his cancer. He's at the finish line. I have to get up and move. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm going to finish this race. And I said, how are you? And he said, this is my first race. I, and at that moment, all the worries, all my thoughts about how bad I was feeling turned to my Muncie race. 
that there was a gentleman there that helped me. So I want to help this person and just said, Hey, do you want to, do you want to finish this race together? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So we found some uh, energy in the last 30 minutes. We or sorry, the last half mile we ran. I don't know where we found that from finished the race. And it was another super exciting moment where I didn't know if I was going to finish this. These are completely etched in my mind. I mean, I remember exactly how I was feeling. I remember exactly how, how, the, how the people were helping me at that moment. And going forward, I'm trying to do that for other people. Those small moments, how can I help them? And it's completely changed my view. It's completely changed uh, my business, uh, my family relationships. And it's, it's pretty amazing.